Sarah, you were going to talk to us about uh, facial recognition software. Yes. All right. So, yeah, I, I just happened upon this um, this week. Uh, I don't even remember how, but I just stumbled on an article about uh, the city of San Francisco recently um, put forth a, a measure to ban the use of facial recognition technology from um, public works, police, and uh, you know, gov- government institutions for the city. Um, is this preemptive? Is this too far ahead? Or is this something that was actually already happening? Oh, it's already happening, yeah. Um, yeah, they're, they're, they're making use of it, and it's becoming more and more popular and more and more in use. And so some places and some organizations, the ACL, ACLU notably, um, have started to be like, wait, hold on. <laughs> this, this, could be, uh, this could be abused. Um, and so the city of San Francisco decided, hey, we're going to take a measure. We're going to stop. And we're just going to not let any of that happen within our city limits. Pump the brakes. Yeah. Um, and there's other cities that are starting to fall in line with that. And they're, they're putting such measures on their books as well to see if they'll get voted on. Um, and so I was looking into it and just all the different arguments on both sides are, are it's just fascinating because, you know, you've got the ACLU who they've like ran through facial recognition, facial recognition, I can talk, software. Um, and they like matched uh, congressional photos with um, like a database and they got about a 5% uh, error Mm, so there's a lot of false positives with right. this technology, right? Yeah, like five percent sounds like a small amount, but you realize, you know, if you're if you're scanning through people, that's one in twenty people that you are getting wrong. Yeah, <laughs> and you know, <laughs> potentially ruining their lives. So that's that's a bit much. Um, and then there's arguments on the other side that they just did not didn't use the software right. Um, uh, and then there's the different benefits and difficulties of the technology, you know, but beneficially you can identify people more easily, more quickly without as much resort to profiling. Um, and you can identify, for instance, sex offenders, um, much more easily in areas where they would be dangerous, like around schools, et cetera, like that. Mm -hmm. So there are potential benefits from it. Um, and of course, on the other hand, there's the potential not only for error, which would be, you know, absolutely terrible for a person's life or just abuse. And the whole idea of this 1984-esque nanny state that we could potentially grow into with this where we're identifying people just because they walk down the streets and, you know, if you have those unpaid parking tickets, well, <laughs> better not leave your house anymore, that sort of thing. Um, and, you know, maybe that's jumping the gun, but, you know, technology progresses. And so I think people are, are starting to see, hey, this is starting to become possible and maybe we want to get in on this at the ground floor and, and put on the brakes. Right. Can I ask a question? Um, no. Do you know if there's a, 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 a party line that is that is being found here? Is one party pro-facial recognition and one is anti-facial recognition? I feel like it could go either way, and in my head there's not any kind of like... Right. I don't feel like it's in the public eye enough yeah. yet for there to be a party line. I think that when it is, you know, a nationally talked about subject more, then there's definitely going to be, well, we're against it, well, we're for it sort of thing. Uh, but right now it's, it's, it's more individualized. And uh, so it's, I, I think it's going to come out where it's more the conservatives are pro uh, facial recognition um, because it's more the sort of, uh, you know, pro police, pro um, law and order restriction sort of thing. Mm-hmm. Um, and then they're the like libertarian subsection of that will be like, no, no, no. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right. right. So, which is, you know, something that's already happening okay. for other technologies. Yeah, you know, I we we think about uh, what's going on in China right now and the mm-hmm. very real civil rights abuses, and we recognize that our own country is not immune uh, to detention camps, to internments, to things that we uh, you know would always like to say is some. Orwellian future that would never come to pass. 1984 has already come and gone, and it's not a police state. But we know that we have the opportunity and the potential to make 
terrible, terrible humanitarian mistakes. And so, you know, creating a, a more sophisticated, more fancy uh, tool to mess up with is a, is a scary thing. I guess I am intrigued by the notion that, you know, any new technology should be applied responsibly. You know, there are so many cases from the 80s and 90s that were later overturned because the junk science that they were utilizing to track DNA and cell phone towers and, you know, I mean, you can't turn on on Netflix these days without seeing some documentary about somebody being wrongfully accused or having their conviction overturned for these sorts of things. So fingerprints. It, yeah. Just yeah. Fingerprints, fingerprints. Are, are terribly yeah. unscientific, <laughs> but that, that brings me to, to, I think my real point is even though I w- hope that this would be responsibly applied and despite our, tr- and I know our track record is not <laughs> great, <laughs> frankly, um, I, I'm, Pro science, and I'm pro a believer in our ability to uh, complete to advance this technology to a point where it is going to be sufficiently accurate when responsibly used in order to avoid things like racial profiling, in order to avoid things like a uh, police detective sort of assuming he knows who he's looking for and then tailoring yeah. all of the narrative mm-hmm. to fit that idea. And so it to me, has a, a huge upside, even as I, I'm a little squigged out about the notion of, of moving forward. Hmm. I'm wondering how it would factor into actually convicting somebody, though, because mm. I know that, like, a, you know, personal testimony doesn't really count for very much. Like, where would this fall there? Because if we know that it has the ability to be wrong. Right. Um, and we also know that it could be user error. <laughs> mm-hmm. Like, at what point, like, it might be helpful to a certain point, but I feel like I would start getting super squeamish if it started being, like, uh, used for the conviction Mm -hmm. process. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Yeah, I mean, I, I we don't have enough time in the day to talk about how flawed eyewitness testimony is, mm-hmm. all of these different things. I mean, our entire court litigation system with uh, constant plea bargaining and mandatory minimums, I mean, there are so many things to <laughs> revisit about our criminal justice system that we are not equipped to discuss. No. Right. Uh, but ultimately, I guess I don't like the idea of uh, ruling this technology out indefinitely. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, responsible application. And if responsible application means a, uh, uh, a hiatus, if it means like putting some kind of moratorium on it in the meantime until yeah. we have uh, sufficiently developed it and are using it appropriately, then I'm totally in favor of that. Uh, but if this is a question about like just shelving the idea entirely, I, I don't think I can get behind that. Yeah, I feel like for for me it would be more along the lines of um, kind of like the D the DUI like uh, anklet thingies. Oh, uh-huh. So like you would have to actually commit some kind of crime or some kind of misdemeanor to be entered into this facial recognition system. Mm-hmm. So like it wouldn't be like oh like here's everybody who's ever existed and we can know everything about them. Mm-hmm. But like if it was like just the people like you said like uh, sex offenders that you would need to keep an eye on, maybe those people along with fingerprinting get input into this facial recognition. Oh, I can't say that. That didn't work. <laughs> uh, um, I don't know. That would be the limit for me. I think anything beyond that makes me. Yeah, I, I don't know. I feel like I have to throw a flag on that play just because of the fact that the people who are currently being fingerprinted and having their uh, pictures entered into the system, having their details entered into the system, uh, are so often do, uh, are receiving that treatment, yes, because they've committed a crime or more likely because they've been convicted or pled guilty to a crime. Uh, and it is disproportionately affecting minorities. Our sex offender registries are absolute garbage. Uh, they are poorly maintained. By no means am I saying that we should give tons of leeway and latitude for somebody who's raped a child to go and hang out in front of a school. It's not what I'm meaning to suggest. What I am saying, uh, and more than suggesting, but claiming, is that our sex offender registries don't reflect that kind of scenario. Mm -hmm. Uh, We have this sort of no tolerance policy where somebody who has done something completely innocuous, somebody who, for instance, is 19 and uh, trading dirty pictures with their girlfriend who's 17, 18, is oftentimes ending up in these kinds of uh, lists and registries and things. So I... 
I, I'm not dismissing where you're coming from, but I, I don't see that as a solution personally. Well, yeah, like you said with the uh, the whole conviction process, like mm-hmm. it's it's a it's a mess. Like all of it is a mess, and it's way too much to get into tonight. Sure. But um, <laughs> yeah, I agree. I think that this is a level of sophistication that maybe we are not equipped to use yet, just because we have so many other things we should be fixing first. Um, but eventually, I mean, if we fix everything else, then sure. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so uh, if we have to make a ruling, uh, where do we stand on the appropriateness of this ban or uh, the idea of other cities, Austin, for instance, enacting a similar one? Uh, for now, I think that the ban should hold. Yeah? Yeah. Sir? Um, a lot of people don't know this. I'm I'm kind of a Luddite. I am very much in favor of the precautionary principle as far as uh, new technologies go. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't believe that technology is inherently neutral at all. Um, and I think that this technology potentially, you know, has favor of putting more power in the hands of those with the ability to have centralized, uh, restricted to outsiders databases. Um, and I don't think that's a good thing. So I very much am in favor of moratoriums, of uh, bans until we, you know, have a lot more, a lot better um, infrastructure in place for that to be used correctly and ethically. Yeah. And I'm, I'm sorry, Skynet is patching in right now to uh, <laughs> inform my vote. Uh, I guess I, I would say that uh, I'm in favor of continuing to move forward, uh, of uh, expanding the use of this technology, of, of really any new technology, uh, and focusing more on reform uh, rather than restriction in, in that sense. Uh, so, hey, we found something that yes. we very softly don't feel exactly <laughs> yeah. the same way about. Uh, cool, 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 Good cool. Enough. Right. 